It's all crystal clear. Right, so uh, maybe we can just go uh, quickly together uh, through the slides of uh, part one and I will ask questions. I will start asking more questions perhaps. So, uh, yeah, a bit further. Maybe um, I can go directly to this or to the next. Yeah, so, uh, for instance, uh, regarding this uh, SSH uh, module, so this is a module that uh, you've been using, for instance, in electromagnetics, acoustics. Uh, what about uh, flexural waves in plates, for instance? Uh, you know, this kind of, of uh, long waves. Of course, yes, if you want to, you can do this, yeah. If you want to use this model, you just need to make sure that um, you have resonances and they are coupled evanescently. So you don't, in this model, you are not in the multiple scattering regime. You, you really have individual resonances and there is no wave that can propagate between these resonances to couple them. It's really evanescent coupling. So you need to, to find a way to engineer this. So I, I would imagine that, for instance, for uh, Rayleigh waves, you would first uh, put, let's say you, you build a forest, a resonant, a meta forest. Okay. Mm -hmm. So this has a band gap. And then in that band gap, you, you put trees that resonate a little bit um, higher in frequency. And these would be your omega zeros. And you put them in the forest. So I don't know, I guess they need to be a bit shorter than the other ones. And, uh, and they would be evanescently coupled to, through the rest. And then you would probably have exactly, uh, you would see your cosine dispersion band for the modes that are carried by these defects that are placed in your forest. You can do that, or you can directly work with uh, waves that are already evanescent in, uh, in flexural, uh, you, you were mentioning flexural waves, so waves on plates. Yeah, because here there is a little trick. These waves are solution of an order four partial differential equation. So I'm not sure that your Hamiltonian uh, would describe, uh, I mean, maybe uh, this would need to be an augmented system. Maybe the, you know, the um, yeah. I mean, yes, it's possible. Uh, okay. It's possible, but I, I would tend to think that this tight binding model is, is right as long as you you have kind of um, high Q factors that somehow you can do some kind of uh, approximation to go from a fourth order in time to a, maybe, a, I don't know, a two order in time. In fact, it's not in time. In, in fact, the, the difficulty is that, you know, instead of having a, a Laplacian, like L modes, you have a D Laplacian. So it's a Laplacian squared. And perhaps, I guess, uh, your Hamiltonian would, uh, would be made, made now uh, a, a four by four matrix. You know, I mean, you would need to. But for yes. Relay, I, 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 I agree. For Relay, uh, it's totally uh, similar to this, I guess. I guess. Yes, if you don't want to buy the model that is two by two, once you have engineered localized resonances, yeah. then you need to go further in details and see how you can go with a larger, you, you think your Hamiltonian will have more components, right? Yeah, yeah, this is what I do. Perhaps I'm wrong, but... Uh... So, yeah, we, we have a paper that, that looks at, that started to look at, at this, not for flexural waves, but in electromagnetism, yeah. where we have more complex operators, uh, maybe we can discuss this at, after yeah. the talk or something. I, I will. And I, 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 I guess, and people may have already done this for water waves. It's mutatis mutatis. It's just the same analysis for water waves in the linear weather regime, but it would be just the exact same model. Surface water waves. For what? Well, the thing about water waves, 
it, it always depends on whether you are in this side binding. So let me just, I mean, at least in the way I see it, there's only two types of, uh, of artificial materials. Let's say you have the ones where you have resonators that are evanescently coupled. So there's no wave here. It's a medium, it's an insulator. Yeah. Or you are the ones that scatter and you have multiple scattering. Okay. They are not coupled in the same way. So water waves, I would say they are more like, it's easier to build this in water waves because you, let's say you have something that floats, yeah. it will scatter the water wave. There, there's propagation always. So then I would say that something like this is more relevant. Uh -huh. It's not clear yet how to go from this to a 2D, if you have really have a 2D system. Because here it's 1D. So in 1D it's clear, this is the theory. Yeah. But um, in 2D you have to, yeah, you have to see something else. Maybe it will involve the radiation, the, the scattering cross-section or something. The radiation pattern of a given inclusion to see how it's coupled to the others and maybe you have these the Twitter, uh, the Twitter waves in the channel it's when you know essentially you can have a... so of course yes if you if you put yourself in a channel and you have you are in mono mode yeah. kind of configuration then you have no problem you can enforce this yeah. Yeah. okay as long as you can define a two by two scattering matrix or two by two transform matrix, you have this theory on that side. Yes, well, actually, for uh, biharmonic, it's a four by four uh, matrix, I believe. Uh, okay, so anyone has questions? <laughs> yes, uh, you can, yeah. Uh, yes. Uh, thanks for your interesting talk, Professor Longa Flore. Uh, I have a uh, um, two questions. Okay, the first one is about your one-dimensional uh, to topological system with two reason letter. So in your case, you have two couplings K and Js, but for an infinite assistance, so they, they, there is not a unique choice for the unit cells. Yeah. For one choice, you can have the intercell coupling larger than the uh, intra-cell couplings. For the other choice, you can have the inverse case. Yeah. Yeah. The physical consequence is really when you... Yeah, you are right. But yes. once you fix but... the unit cell, then everything falls. So the physical consequence is basically when you have an interface or an edge, because this sets your first unit cell. Mm -hmm. So and that means... It's a if... reference to your system, and that explains why you have to describe this one as a winding of zero and this one as a winding of one. You yeah. cannot change your unit cell here and say the winding is zero. It's because you didn't generate correctly your crystal. Okay, so for an infinite assistance, the classification of this topology doesn't uh, uh, play an important role. Only yeah, the fact that it's zero or one, there's no fundamental thing there. Mm -hmm. You can call it one and zero, it doesn't matter. But the, the, what matters is that they are different once you fix the unit cell. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You cannot go from one band structure to the other one without closing the bound gap. That's what matters. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, so concerning the second order topological insulators, well, I just have a very uh, trivial uh, questions. So you said for the second order topological insulators, there will be corner states. This corner state can be viewed as the edge of the edge of a two-dimensional system, right? It's yes. the, edge the edge. So I was wondering, how would this corner state evolve when the corners become more and more smooth? So in that case, the two edges doesn't intersect as a, a very sharp point. Yeah, that's interesting. So uh, to answer that, I can, so you can imagine, let's say you start from this system and you look at this corner state. Yeah. And you go continuously from this situation to the situation where this point is exactly aligned with this one and this one. Mm -hmm. Okay. What is going to happen is that my guess is that you will close the bound gap between the two edges. 
Mm -hmm. So these two bounds gap here that allow for the corner, they are going to close. So this guy is going to be close to this guy, and then they are going to meet and become a single edge state. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Another thing is you have to be careful with this kind of kind of system because they, they, there is a symmetry protection. So they need to be to have sixfold in this case sixfold rotational symmetry. It means that not only the, the infinite bulk has to have this symmetry, but also the finite system. You, you notice that we always take a hexagon. Yes. So for, for the topological invariant that we consider to be even defined, we need a hexagonal system. So what you would have to do is you, you would have to round all corners at the same time. Mm -hmm. But the question is a little bit more, how do you do this in a discrete system like this? And you can pull this atom here. I don't know exactly how you define your rounding corners, but most likely there is something to study there. Yes, for a discrete system, it's not easy to get a rounding corner. That is just for a continuous instance, it is easy to say a rounding corners. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, okay, thanks. It's an interesting question. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> so, are there any more questions? Uh, so, maybe uh, this is Angela Madeo from Inside Lyon. Uh, I, I tried to put the video starting. Uh, I don't know if uh, the video is working. In any case, nice to meet you all in here, and uh, thank you for this nice presentation. It was just a curiosity on my side. Uh, if I understand well, you uh, are just able, uh, are like able to introduce an interface in your metamaterial and uh, compute reflection transmission as, at this interface, as you show. Uh, at some point. So uh, my curiosity was if you can uh, in some way uh, control how the uh, the exterior is uh, acting on your system, on your metamaterial, like on your plastic tube, for example, at, uh, in your example, uh, it's a 1D example, yeah, this one. So in reality, uh, this should interact with uh, your system. So can you control and quantify this interaction or? Uh... Yes, in experiment, it's not like this. Um, mm -hmm. So here we always have a plane wave propagating in, in this pipe. So yeah. There's a forward plane wave and a backward plane wave. So if you put, um, let's say what we do in experiments is we put a loudspeaker here. Mm -hmm. So we have forward and the reflection is basically a backward wave. And at the end of the system, there is a forward wave, the transmission. And after that, we put a long anechoic termination that we have built out of melamine foam. That's why we work at those frequencies that are high enough so we can build this easily. And, and therefore, you just have a wave coming out. So basically, this is matched. Mm -hmm. You don't have reflection coming back. So that's, that's the only trick to measure easily this transmission. So ideally, in your experiments, you would be interested in keeping a 1D uh, situation. Uh, in that case, yeah. yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. OK, so uh, I mean, uh, because in general, uh, if uh, there is too much interaction from the outside, all your effects that you uh, highlight could uh, get somehow modified or... Yes, uh, I mean, it's, it's like um, microwave filters. I mean, if you want to measure the response, you have to match the second port. Um, and if you cascade systems like this, it's not necessarily trivial that you will just cascade the transfer functions. Mm -hmm. you, you have to match them together and make sure that this works. So it's, you, you are completely right that if you have something after, let's say you want to filter and then you want to send it somewhere else and there might be some reflection there, mm -hmm. then it might be that uh, 
you have to design carefully the, the junction between both so that you still have your, the functionality that you want. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Okay, so thank you. Very interesting talk. Thank you. That, that was. Maybe we can move to the next part of the poll. This part? Yeah. Um, there is something I, I, I'm quite puzzled by uh, all these topological uh, metamaterials uh, in uh, three dimensions. Can, can you comment on that? Because your very last example is really this kind of 3D topological insulator. Yeah. Uh, so here? Yeah. So um, how does it work now, your uh, topological uh, invariant? Uh, because uh, yes absolutely so uh, first notice that this system is not an insulator you, you see that we have two bands here and they touch because we have what we call wild points which are uh, degeneracies in 3d kx ky kz so they are linear in kx ky and kz just like a direct point um, so it's not an insulator so there is not a complete band gap in this system. So it's 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 different physics. So you have in these systems that are wild systems, um, you can show that these wild points, so these degeneracies between bands, they are sources and drain of Berry curvature. Or basically, maybe I can try to answer your question non-technically by saying that the topology in these 3D systems is not defined for the entire 3D uh, system at once. The first thing that we do is we take a cut plane. We take a cut plane that make us, um, what do, it makes the system 2D, parameterized by, let's say, uh, in the following slide, it's parameterized by, uh, KY, you see, topological plane. It means that I took a cut in this 3D uh, bond diagram. So now I'm 2D because once I fix KY, I have KX and KZ. And then we use the known theories for 2D topological insulators. So for instance, here KY equals zero is a topological plane. So when I cut, okay, here, this is fixed already, ky equals zero. But when I, I fix ky to zero, and I um, I let kz evolve, and I plot all my modes projected with kx, I see, this time I see an insulator, and I see some states on the edge. So these correspond to surface states with fixed ky equal to zero. So it's a little bit tricky. It's like it, it's not it's not an invariant for everything at once. It's an invariant that depends on the cut plane that you take, and you can take an infinite, infinitely many cut planes. Okay, but you show. I mean, it's known that if the cut plane is between the wild points, then it's going to be topological, and if the cut plane is not in between the wild points, it's not topological. Because these white points, they, they have charges. So the charges are now on the, on the white points. So let's say you take a cut plane like this, um, and you are, and, and you have the two white points on the right. Then let's say this white point is plus and this one minus. This cut plane has a zero charge. And then when you cross a white point, you close the bound gap of your cut plane, and you are going to leave a charge outside so it will create a net charge for all the cut planes that are in between and then you do that a second time and you cancel out the, this charge so it's always bringing the system back to 2d in order to to define the topological environment in these wild wild systems and it's pretty much everywhere the same thing 
then it can be churn, it can be uh, Z2. I mean, you have all this zoology for these 2D cut planes, but it doesn't matter. It, you bring it back to 2D. I'm sorry, I did not uh, understand what was the governing equation. So here, what kind of wave physics is it? So here it's it's tight binding model. So it's couple resonator. So imagine this is a, an acoustic sphere, yeah, like a Helmholtz resonator, yeah, and these channels are hollow, yeah. So and they they behave they are designed so that they implement coupled a, a given hopping between the two resonances. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So you really have like a tight binding type of Hamiltonian. Mm -hmm. It's not an uh, elastic system. Mm -hmm. It could be, but it's not. And, uh, because uh, we've been looking uh, some while ago at the system of uh, rigid spheres so for acoustics. And uh, we, we've been wondering for uh, quite a while if this was some kind of uh, maybe topological insulator, but I, I don't know. It's, it's really hard to understand this. Uh, yeah. So here the wave is really inside, and since the the physics is really coupled resonators, it's there's no there's no difficulty in mapping it to a simple Hamiltonian. Yeah. But your system is extremely anisotropic huh? because uh, your uh, yes. special waves. Uh, I mean, it's it's extremely anisotropic. Absolutely, it's, yeah. yeah, it's completely okay. anisotropic. Uh, maybe it's not a, uh, I mean, it's not an effective index. Uh, I mean, so by effective index, yeah, you, you mean uh, effective uh, density matrix, perhaps? Uh, how do you define your effective index? Yeah, you say your refractive index is close to zero, but uh, your refractive index is, yeah. a, is a matrix, actually. Yeah, it's very simple. I, I don't go into crazy things. Yeah. I just say I have an edge mode. It's one dimensional. Yeah. So, I just look at this like a 1D channel. Okay. So this defines my wave number. What is the phase variation along this channel? Okay. And so I can look at the, just the slope of the dispersion along of the edge mode. Okay, so. Because... There's really no, nothing complex. It's, it's really the fact, the fact that this guy is flat. Yeah. Um, of course, it's only in one in that direction. If, if I... yeah, so effectively, uh, essentially, you are just interested in, uh, let's say, yeah, okay, the uh, the channel direction. Mm -hmm. Yes. Your 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 medium uh, in the middle. It's something which is defined by not by a zero index. Points. I guess it's something which is more like a uh, effective density matrix, which is uh, extremely anisotropic, perhaps with zero in the direction you mentioned, but it could be infinite with the other two or something like that. Yes. That's so, right. Exactly. Yes. So, yeah. Uh, and in fact, if you cut the system differently, you, let's say you cut it along this direction. Yeah. If it, it does, it's not at all. It doesn't work. Yeah. yeah. So which is why it's quite hard. So, so it's some kind of partial insulator. It's a, it's a topological insulator, but only in one direction. It's a very partial, and it, I mean, it's, it's topologically protected only in this Z direction. Yeah, that's all. You, you see, you could have a strong leakage in the orthogonal uh, two directions. Yes, I mean, as long you can look at other directions and you would have edge states in many directions, in many, many directions you would, but there is only one direction where you can, you can say that in that direction, I have a, I have an infinite phase velocity along the edge. So you, in other direction, you would have an edge mode, but you wouldn't have this, this constant phase. Uh, behavior. It's quasi static. Okay, fascinating. Uh, please uh, come forward and please do ask the questions, people, you know. <laughs>
let's take this uh, great opportunity to have Romain with us and uh, we can ask him any naive questions, just like you, just to, you know, better understand all this uh, wonderful subject. Ok, ou ma mère. So, then we close this session then and uh, remind everyone that uh, next week uh, Sir John Pendry will uh, give a webinar on uh, time uh, mobility mechanicals. So, we would uh, very much welcome uh, everyone again. Uh, next Tuesday. Thank you very much for your attention and let us thank our great speaker again. Thank you very much. Thanks a lot.